the advocacy of women's rights on the grounds of political, social, and economic equality to men. Hmm. Well, I knew that, but it's great. We understand what feminism is now. So to make a point, I am also going to Google communism, a political theory derived from Karl Marx advocating class war and leading to a society in which all property is publicly owned and each person works and is paid according to their abilities and needs. Well, that just sounds lovely. Now, using these definitions in a political theory class works just fine. People understand you are using the pure definition unassociated with outside influence on the word. But outside in the real world, we acknowledge the definition holds a different meaning regardless of what Google says. If we observe someone who lived in the USSR who denounces communism, we don't instantly assume that they hate the idea of each person working and being paid according to their abilities and needs. We assume they detest the communist government they lived under and individuals who did others harm in the name of communism. The same way when I look at a woman who is holding a sign saying, I don't need feminism, I don't assume she hates equality for men and women. I assume she is against what feminism has become and the ridiculous things people who call themselves feminists are fighting for. This seems like a fairly easy concept to understand. So it looks a little silly when feminists like yourself, Mark, uh, claim anti-feminists don't understand what the word means. Because you either understand you are using a stupid argument, or you are totally oblivious to the fact that movements' actions don't always correlate with their definitions. A few days immediately after the slut walk, I, these ladies published a petition about me that was just riddled with lies to get me kicked out of my political party, all because I was a woman with the wrong opinions. If you need any notion of how ridiculous these people were being and how ridiculous this petition is, here are a favorite here are my few of my favorite quotes from the letter that went along with the petition. So, I, along with others, was quite traumatized by a woman that was there named Lauren Southern. I asked her how there could be no rape culture when I had been raped four times. And this was a common thing that went on there, like, I've been raped 20 times, I've been raped seven times. And it's like, just so I know this is the girl who was raping us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it. <laughs> <laughs> and she was being mentally and physically harassing dozens of women. The English that was used was uh, great in this as well. <laughs> Lauren told one of my friends to check her many privileges. This was not only hurtful, but ironic, as she is a trans person who is filled with half Aboriginal blood. And, uh, <laughs> shit that never happened, by the way. They're just making this up now. Th okay, this is the best one here. I vomited all last night. I was so triggered. Many other women, <laughs> many other women, were experiencing fallout symptoms as well. <laughs> These people were acting like it was fucking Chernobyl. <laughs> Wait, oh, this one was pretty good too. I felt a protector, Mama Queen roaring and raging inside me while these women were being re-victimized by Lauren Southern. I'm not sure where the strength came from. I was shaking and weak after, and needed to be held up for a moment as I led the wolf pack away from the predator. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> that was a bit of a Freudian slip there, I think, because last time I checked, wolf packs were the predator, but whatever. She, she got lost in her own imagination while writing this. Now, this was before I was fully acquainted with the powers of the PC police. I thought that same people would look at this letter and laugh like I did. I thought they would know that these girls were out of their fucking minds. <laughs> and I thought this petition would just confirm it for them when they saw it. But to my complete shock, instead, tons of people were totally buying this fabricated story. Nobody cared about evidence either. I had people that I knew from high school that I had family friends that were deleting me off Facebook that just sent me vitriolic messages. I was horrified to see what was going on. And I sent them video evidence. I actually had to publish a video immediately after that reached almost a million views showing that this petition was a lie about me, showing all the footage that I was not going up to rape survivors and telling them they deserved to be raped, as this petition said I was. I showed the whole clip I was standing there silently, and yet people did not care about it. They deleted me on Facebook and still haven't talked to me to this day. Eventually, the Libertarian Party that I was writing for removed me as a candidate as well, for a candidate's parliament, because of... Uh, my wrong thing. <laughs> it was a rude awakening for me, and I didn't understand the full extent of social justice regression until I was forced to confront it head to head. 
It appears people have a hard time recognizing authoritarianism unless it looks familiar. Social justice warriors don't wear jack boots, pointed hats, or gray uniforms. Instead, they wear piercings, ironic t-shirts, and colored hair. But that doesn't diminish the massive threat they represent to free speech. They destroy lives, they degrade society, and corrode our fundamental freedoms while claiming that they, not you, are the real victims. Hearing so many more people talk about um, how girls are being treated badly in games and all of this, and I'm just thinking back to all my experiences gaming, it doesn't make sense to me because the only time, I don't remember any times being treated sexist in games. Yes, people did. If they did find out I was a girl, they would refer to my gender sometimes in insults while gaming. But the amount of insults that flew back and forth, it didn't even matter. <laughs> Especially in games like Call of Duty, it just doesn't matter. And in a lot of cases, people will mistake me for a 10-year-old boy on things like Ventrilo and on Xbox Live Chat or whatever. And that's... I wouldn't even correct them a lot of the time because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who I am to you over the mic. It's just, am I playing the game? Am I having fun? Am I with friends? It it didn't matter if they thought I was a 10-year-old boy on mic because it's not about my gender or my age. It's not about that. But so many people are trying to make it about that. They're trying to make it about gender, race, age. When people who actually do game know that that doesn't matter. It's, in many games, that just doesn't matter. And I don't know, That I think that's what kind of formed my views of people and seeing people more as individuals than as groups, as um, in interest groups, because that's my experience growing up was talking to people just as individuals and not thinking about what they looked like or not thinking about their gender or race or anything. I don't know, MMOs made me not a racist. <laughs> Agree or disagree, people should be allowed to say what they want. The idea that you should suffer some kind of punishment for speaking openly is astounding. Seriously, try mentioning some of these things in one of your classrooms one day. I've nearly given professors aneurysms and they've cussed me out in class and said I'm not allowed to express certain views because of that. A girl in my women's studies class, which I... <laughs> took because I'm a crazy person, uh, she, she actually stood up in the middle of the class and said, your different opinions make me afraid to come to class. You shouldn't be allowed to have that. Now, I've been brought in front of the dean multiple times, and they kind of talk to me a bit, and they're like, oh, Lauren, we've got all these complaints about you again, and they'll get something and just go through free speech. But I get complaints constantly because people are genuinely afraid of different opinions on campuses. It's insane. And this is the issue, is what people consider hate speech is so ambiguous and subjective that it can really be anything. If you go to Jersey Shore and give some women on the beach the ability to legislate hate speech laws, you're going to find yourself getting a prison sentence because you say someone's eyebrows are not on fleek. <laughs> and as a Canadian, I'm jealous of you and your First Amendment rights. Unfortunately, in Canada, we don't have the benefit of real constitutional protection of free, free speech rights. We do have hate speech laws, though enforced proudly by the Human Rights Commission, our Orwellian Council that was initially meant to address small disputes over racial discrimination and gender discrimination in the workplace, but has now been transformed into the big brother waiting for us to say <coughs> something wrong. You give them a little control and they will take a lot. 